Hello you, you're listening to Blahuga, and this is the second video of a series of videos where I show you how to make mods for Spirit of the North or any other Unreal Engine game I guess that you so desire. If you haven't seen part one, you should probably watch that because that goes over everything we've done up until this point. Playlist will be in the description. Anyways, let's talk about entry points. So, entry points are basically, well, entry points, wherever you will execute your own blueprint code. So in your mods folder, uh, select the mod you want to edit and go into the mod actor. First off, I've told you this before, this is an entry point. This is when you click button number zero from the mod menu buttons uh, um, array. So number zero, the button is called test action. Drag a pin out. And, uh, hmm, what should we do? We can do anything we want for just demonstration. I'll just do print string. It'll do nothing in the actual game. But that's an entry point. Anything I'll put print string, that will be an entry point. So this happens if you click the button called test action. The next entry point, you will have an event called begin play. This will be called as soon as your mod actor is created by UML in the game. Again, print string. That's another entry point. You can also have this. If the mod button is pressed without the integer being required to determine which output it has. These are two of the simplest um, entry points you got for making mods here. But let's say you have another button that will test or create a test widget. Let's go create our widget. I like to put this in its own folder. I call it mod widgets. And in this folder, go to right click to add something, user interface, and then widget blueprint. I'm just gonna put it MW test and save all whenever you have a plus symbol. Double click to go into your widget and here we go. This is an empty widget. That's for demonstration, just add a button. I'll call it, keep it as button zero, it doesn't matter. And you can change the properties like the anchors, position, size, alignment, and a lot of other parameters like for style and stuff. And then under graph, you got more entry points with your widget. Everything here is explained when you hover over it. Event construct is basically when the widget is constructed by another blueprint, like your mod blueprint. Event tick is executed every single frame, and you can also add that here into the mod widget. Event tick. You also have event end play and event destroyed. The event tick, it'll be executing every single frame, with delta seconds being the amount of time in seconds between the previous rendered frame and this current frame that it's executed on. So all of these are also entry points. An additional entry point within your widget would be, for example, if you click that button that we added. So you have to click it in the variables first, and then over down below you'll find events. You got all of these, you got on uh, on clicked, pressed, released, hovered, or unhovered. On clicked is the most common. So that will be your another entry point right there. Entry points is just where you will begin to execute whatever you want. For demonstration, I just put it as print string, which will do nothing in the actual game. I have somehow almost forgot to add that in order for your widget to be created by the second button, over here, the test widget button. Add another pin to the switch on int node and drag out from pin number one. You want to want to search create widget. Sorry, create widget. And then under class, it'll be pretty easy to find your widget. MW test. And then in the return value, do uh, add to viewports. Yeah, or you could use something that I will demonstrate later. Remember, stay tuned. I know this video is very quick, but it's Another thing I have to add to the series of tutorial videos to understand how to mod games such as 
Spirit of the North. Again, if you want to know how to export your mod and package it and get it ready and everything, that's in the first part. Stay tuned for the third part where I'll be talking about how to design a widget and further and after that we will understand how to use existing game assets, create custom maps, create custom materials, work with existing game assets, and more.